Good evening and welcome to the Student Hub Live. Well, this event is a Faculty of Business and Law Refreshers event and my name's Karen Foley and I'll be hosting the programme for the next couple of hours. Now, I'd like to welcome many of you at home who are new students who are super excited about your studies and who may have never been to an event like this before. So let me tell you how it all works. This is the OU's live online interactive platform and our aim is to develop an academic community. I'm going to tell you loads of stuff here. A lot of it is already in the module material, so there's nothing fundamentally new here. But we think it's really nice to introduce you to some key people, and most importantly, for you to meet other students as part of your learning journey. Now, this space is an opportunity to talk to other people, and you can do that in the chat. So you can write pretty much whatever you want. You can also ask questions, and if one of our hot desk team can't answer that, we'll put that to our live guests in the studio. And you can also tell us what you think and what you're doing. And we've got a range of polls and tools that you can fill in. Now, the beauty of filling those in is that you can get to see what everyone else at home thinks also. So right now, we'd like to know where you are in the country, We'd like to know how you're feeling. And those wordles that have like three spaces and they need three things in there, otherwise your results won't submit. So if you can only think of one or two, that's absolutely fine. Just put a dot in the other boxes so that uh, your results will send. And then you can also see what everyone else at home thinks too. We'd like to know which level you're studying. And at last count, we had 87% of you studying level one. So it's great to see new students there. Some of you might be starting at level three and you might be new to the Open University as well. So it's great to have you on board. And yesterday we had a generic event which told you all about the general OU systems and introduced you to some key colleagues as well. So you might like to catch up on that also. And I'll explain a little bit about that later. So I've mentioned that there's the chat and that can move pretty quickly. So if it does, my suggestions to you are to use the pin button on the top right hand side of the screen and that holds the chat so you can scroll down if there's something you wanted to pick up on. And there are also different interfaces you can use so the chat will become bigger or smaller. Now moderating the chat, I'm joined by HJ and Michelle who are going to be chatting to you and also telling us how you're feeling and what you're doing. So let's see how everyone at home is, HJ and Michelle. We're doing really well at home. Great. There's loads of people coming in, isn't there? Which is absolutely amazing. And people are coming from all over as well. Uh, Rustika is from France. We've got people from Birmingham. Uh, Laura's hailing from Munich. Uh, Michael from Leeds and Reading. It'd be nice to see some more Welsh people in here as well. Um, but lots of people just starting off. Most modules are uh, W101 and B100, aren't they? That's right. But we do have some students who are here coming in on their second level or on their third level. So we've a great range of students. And we have a little bit of anxiety going on, a little bit of worry about time management. And someone said about juggling their children and Sarah suggested try juggling balls first ah, <laughs> and then progress suggestion. so I think that's a really really good and Daniel said he's really envisaging the wearing the black cap and the gown and walking across <laughs> the stage so yeah. what a wonderful way to get motivated and start your studies and it's not just children we're dealing with we've got kittens on our keyboard yes. hasn't haven't we <laughs> April's managed to bribe bribe them to get them away just for now but uh, I'm sure they'll always be back and sitting on the keyboard but with this chat like we've been doing anything goes your thoughts comments and questions we want to hear them and our fantastic guests in the stu studio want to too so feel free to put anything in the chat it's been great chatting to people so far if you haven't introduced yourself already just say a quick hello it's great to speak to everyone and hj if they want to send in pictures of their pets or their study space that's it are your cats on keyboards Please or do. juggling children <laughs> send them into our student hub at open.ac.uk and we'd love to put them on our fantastic board behind this over our fresh events we've been putting loads of pictures up of people's study spaces study buddies we've had parrots and rabbits and the views from where you are and we like study tips as well so i've been Absolutely. putting them on our board so if there's a top tip you think will be really helpful for me or anyone else in the chat we'd love to hear it i just have to say be a bit careful if you are juggling your kids we don't want you to hurt yourself before you start your modules but well, actually it. our producers <laughs> made me say uh, that we advise not juggling live children um you use dolls please <laughs> and also i hear we have a kiora to new zealand so i think that's our first oh, kiora absolutely yeah. i didn't realize there was a kiwi on there so i was born in new zealand and karen yeah. i think you were yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. so <laughs> kiwis in the house over here with the weather we're everywhere aren't yeah, we yeah so <laughs> wherever, 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 the weather the weather 
Helen, I can't speak. Back to you. <laughs> Brilliant. So we've got a packed program over the next couple of hours. Let me tell you what we've got in store. We're going to talk first about making the most of your business and law study resources. Then we have business and law helpers here. So I'm expecting the police, but uh, actually it's going to be Dudley and Carolyn uh, from our student support team, who are probably better than the police force uh, because they offer a huge range of support for you that you may either know you need or not know you need. So we're going to talk a little bit to them about that. Then we've asked Matt and Stephanie, who are business and law students, for their advice about things that they think business and law students should know. And then we're going to end tonight's program with a really fun and informative session from Carol and Michelle. Um, and we're going to talk about staying well and studying well. So a really, really important thing as you're juggling all of these various things in life. OK, well, let's get cracking with our programme because we've got so much to cover. I'm joined by Sarah Henderson and Caroline Derry. We're going to talk about making the most of your business and law studies. And we've asked students here which module they're about to start studying, and we've already heard a lot about those. Now, you two um, come from different areas of the university, and uh, I won't get hung up on our sort of job titles and things because mm. I don't think even I can remember what they are, and it certainly doesn't really matter to the students. But, Sarah, you're a student experience manager, which means that you look after the student experience experience and, and we know that that's really important to us here um, and you're also an undergrad undergraduate business program and law lecturer. Yes that's right so I work full-time in the university as a student experience manager so looking after things like events for students, looking after ALs, making sure everyone's in their right group um, and also I'm an associate lecturer so I'm a tutor of some, some students as well. So you should be able to answer everything. Hope so. <laughs> I'll do my best. Well on, on a very different um, angle, Carolyn you were a uh, registered nurse for 20 years. No. Um, <laughs> uh, no you weren't? No. <laughs> oh gosh, I've got that on here. I, I thought that's no. really, really peculiar. <laughs> tell us what you what, what. Tell us about yourself. Okay, so I originally qualified as a barrister, also practiced as a solicitor, but for the past seventeen or so years, I've been a law lecturer, and so I. I'm the module chair for W101, so involved in making sure all the materials are up to date, suitable for students, and that assessments are there and so on. Brilliant. I've got a nurse up next. I've cut and pasted my notes in the wrong place. <laughs> there you go. Attention to detail. A yeah, lesson for us all. I'll be a terrible nurse. <laughs> well, I did think. Oh, gosh, you, know, you never know. I thought, there's a surprise. You can, you know. <laughs> So let's first start thinking about the module website. So this is a key place that students need to start. They'll all have access to this. So it's something people can go away and do right now. So how do students get to the module website? Let's take a look at how they might navigate there from student home. Yeah, the best way to get to the module website is directly from student home. So when you go to the student home, you can go into your module website. And we've got one of the module websites up there now. It's the B100 module website. Um, but that really makes no difference. They're all set up in the same way. Um, so when you go to your module website what you will see is that each of the weeks in the study planner is broken down so what you can do is you can open just one week the week that you're working on and what I always advise students is just open that week because if you've got them all open at once it can feel really overwhelming um, but if you've just got that one week open then you can focus just on the stuff that's in in that week and, and it really makes it feel much more manageable. Um, along the top you can also access other um other tabs which take you to things like the assessments. Oh, we're back. Um, assessments, so you can see what your TMAs or other assessments are depending on the module you're on. Um, you can get into your forums. Um, you can get into other resources, so you can access things like library resources. Um, and so it's really easy to navigate your way around um, the module website when and you get there. And of course there. there's tutorials, and a really simple thing to do is mm -hmm. go in there and book all your tutorials, and then they'll show up in that planner, won't they? Yeah, exactly right. So as soon as you go into the tutorials tab, you'll be able to see all of the tutorials you can book and you can see which ones suit you best in terms of the dates. Um, or if you want to book on the ones with, with your tutor, you can book on those. You don't have to book on the ones with your tutor. You can book on whichever one suits you best. So um, what I would say is go in and book those tutorials. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. And you've done something. So yeah. people can do that. They've been doing that this morning uh, while they've been watching Student Hub. They've been multitasking and getting yeah. on there. So go and find your tutorials, book on those, and, and then you'll uh, feel confident that you'll Remember to go to them. Mm. Now, the other thing that's important to mention is you were showing a certain view there, and there's a short view, like the, the few weeks that you've got, and there's also the mm. whole view as well. So yeah. if you'd like to see the whole study planner, you can just change on the different tab there to see the current view or the whole 
course. Yeah, that's exactly right. So you can just see the current weeks um, or if you want to see the whole study plan and so that you can start organising yourself for, for weeks that are coming up, then you, you can put those on as well. But from your perspective as a tutor then, what do you advise students sort of tend to use? Um, I think that um, when students are doing the planning stage at the beginning, what they would want to do is just go through um, and see all of the weeks and see what it is that they're going to work on week by week. I wouldn't say that, you know, open up the weeks to see all of the study materials because you're not going to get there yet. Um, but it's good to see the study planner and then you can pop into your, your diaries or your planners what you're going to study week by week. But when you start studying, close them down and just focus on the week you're working on because if you've got everything open at once, like I say, it can get quite sc scrolly, it can feel quite long it can feel a little bit overwhelming yeah in particular early days yeah mm. Mm. okay so why don't we take a look then at what a typical week might look like mm. so um carolyn do you want to show us what uh, will happen when they expand on a week of the study planner we can see an activity here on the screen yeah so when you expand the week it has the materials and activities for that week um, those may include things like events, but in particular, they'll include typically um, one of your study units. And that unit has all sorts of things in it. Text about your subject, obviously, but also pictures, videos, audio, website might all be in there. But what's really important are the activities as well. So these are a really good way to test your understanding of what you've studied and to think about it in a bit more depth. Um, and the really nice thing about them, especially the reflective ones, is they let you think about how much you've learned and how much progress you're making and also about how you can use it in other areas of your life. So the exercise we saw there was about reading, not just on the course materials, but the reading you do generally. So you could really think about how your study fits in with your life, how you can use it for things like your employment, for example. Now, this is something that students fill in. They can save and reveal the discussion. So when they've yes. typed in there, they can then see what perhaps the module team may have thought in response to that activity um, or some other comments as well. Um, but you can just put an X in um, and then lose all of the opportunity to have a valuable learn experience that you might sort of have in a typical tutorial where someone will say, let's have a think about this. And mm. that's that sort of activity process, isn't it, that really consolidates your learning exactly and it makes sure that you understand it so sometimes you'll find you're perhaps not as clear as you were and the yeah. comments really useful quite often you find oh I actually understand yeah. it and could use it more than I realized and the other nice thing especially with the reflective questions is because you save them you can go back later and look at them and realize just how much progress you're making yeah. as you work through the module and with reflective activities as well sometimes there's just a different interpretation there's sometimes not a right or a wrong answer it can be really useful to sort of have a think about things fill in that box which incidentally only you can see so these aren't mm. assessed they don't get sent to the module team or your tutor or anything like that um, but in doing that activity, you can think, actually, maybe just that's a different perspective or I hadn't thought about it that way. Am I reading the question right, maybe? That could trigger different areas of learning that you might need to focus on. Mm. Yeah, yeah, exactly. OK. How's everyone at home, HJ Michelle? We're doing really well at home. There's loads of people still introducing themselves. For all the people that have just come in, on the chat, anything and everything goes. So if you want to put your thoughts, comments or questions in there, we'll be happy to see them and put them to our guests as well. And we've had two really good questions in the chat, haven't we? Well, I think we have. We've got 189 people mm. in the group, which is absolutely great. <laughs> uh, Hayley has asked, does it matter if I'm using the booklets and not online to study? Do any of you like to answer that? Yeah, well, it depends on which module you're doing. Some modules will have um, materials that are sent out um, as booklets and, and some won't. Um, so that's the first thing where, where it will matter. Um, it, it doesn't matter if you're studying um, if you're studying a module with written materials, you can look at the written materials or you can access them as PDFs, as um, e-books via the, um, the online module website. There are additional materials on there, though, and the, the sorts of things that Caroline has talked about, so things like um, reflective activities, things like quizzes, other things to interact with, and, and they are on there um, on the module website deliberately to help students embed their learning. So what I would say is don't, don't think of your courses, oh, well, I've got my booklet 
now. I'll read that and, and then I'm done. Um, do go on and engage with the online learning materials as well. Brilliant. And it's great to see so many people in the chat. But please remember, please don't share mobile numbers or personal emails in the chat because this is a public space. You might want to find uh, Facebook groups and those are organized by OU students as well. So that can be a great way to connect with others. But it's wonderful to see so many of you here chatting today. I'd like to talk about tutorials, Sarah, because um, this is a really common thing. You've mentioned the importance of booking on them, but what's the point in booking on them if you don't know what's going to happen? They might be really <laughs> scary, which they're not. Um, and there are two main forms of tutorials. The, the, the most common, I guess, is online tutorials, which are slightly different to this, but if you can get here, you can get there. Yeah. Um, so tell us what happens in an online tutorial. Okay, so in an online tutorial, we run them through Adobe Connect, um, which is an online classroom essentially so you'll you'll log in and you can see who's in the online classroom and you can see your tutor there some tutors will use a webcam some tutors won't so you may be able to see your tutor um, but either way what they will do is take you through the tutorial online and they'll build in interactivities so um, ways that you can discuss um, you can use your microphone to talk to the rest of the group you can do things like um, contribute through the chat box as, as the participants are doing today um, the tutor might build in things things like multiple choice questions, polls, um, we might write on the whiteboard, all sorts of things that we would do normally in a face-to-face -face classroom. We just do in the Adobe Connect classroom as well, so students can attend from, from their own homes. Brilliant. Now, students can be allocated to certain groups depending mm. on, I guess, how things are organised. Mm. So students will get a choice of tutorials that they can join, and we've mentioned before they go to that tutorials tab and then they can log on to the ones that they'd like to book on to, yep. and then a tutor organising that may email them or not. So it's a good idea to be booked on. But the face-to-face -face tutorials, if there are those options available to students, mm. they're a bit different, and sometimes it can be really helpful. For example, if you're going to London for the weekend or something, um, to maybe think about choices that are a bit further afield to you. Yeah. So students have a choice about those. How do the face-to-face -face work, and what happens at them? Well, it depends on the module that you're on, again. Mm. Um, most modules will have um, a mixture of online and face-to-face. -face. Some will be online only. Um, and, and sometimes the face-to-face the -face will have an online equivalent. So you can choose either to go to the face-to-face -face workshop or you can go to the online. And the, uh, the materials covered will be the same. But um, essentially, if you go to the face-to-face, -face, it's a classroom where you'll be with your peers and your tutor, and you'll be able to ask questions of your tutor, take part in classroom discussions. Um, but but in, in many ways, the material delivered is the same online as it is face-to-face. -face. Now, Ristik is worried because they haven't received um, their module materials yet. And you mentioned that sometimes you get sent things, sometimes you don't. Mm -hmm. um, and also, when we were asking about booklets and things, you were sort of saying, I guess, really, that the importance is knowing what you should have got or yes. what you have got. Yeah. So that you know then what you don't have or what, what you okay. can or can't study. Yeah. So should, should anyone stress that they haven't got anything yet? No, I mean, if you're worried that you haven't received something and you think you that should... you should have received, um, yeah. yeah. phone the student services team and they will be able to sort you out. Um, or you, you should have your tutor's details now as well. So you can just get in contact with your tutor and say, should I have received something? Yes. Um, and if there is something you should have received that you haven't, again, you can contact the student services team um, and they can, they can let you know what's That module website, irrespective of whether you're sent a book or not, will have everything have pretty everything much on, on it in an alternative format so if you haven't got a book you yeah. should have got so you can go and look at the pdf go, yeah and at the moment for the time being you can look at the pdf um, and, and you can look at those materials online so if you go to the resources tab um, that we talked about already you'll be able to access all the resources that way anyway Brilliant. Now, the other important tab on there was the assessment tab. So mm -hmm. I'd like to talk about that because that can be something that can provoke a bit of anxiety, especially for people who maybe haven't studied for quite some time. Um, so what guidance and help is available to students? In a word, lots. Yeah. Um, on the assessment itself, if we take, for example, a TMA, which is a coursework question, you'll find that when you look at it on the website, you get and we can see here, so that front page has the instruction, so things like the due date, um, the word count, and so on. The next page is the questions. The it's bit bold everyone... as well, I see. I like the bold bits. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> yeah, you can't Take miss note. the important bit. Um, then there are the questions, and obviously that's the bit everybody wants to see. Those are important. Yes. But students should then carry on to the next pages where they'll see the learning outcomes and those are bullet points setting out exactly what the marker is looking for, um, what 
you're supposed to demonstrate and the advice section and the advice section we'd really stress is really useful that will tell you quite a lot on how to approach the question and the sorts of things to include so it will give a lot of extra information on how to the answer the question appropriate to the level of study so basically plenty of information there on how to deal with the assessments brilliant HJ and Michelle you've gone awfully quiet there I hope oh you're not talking goodness. about cake are you <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're so actually very focused we are we? so focused there are so many great questions we've asked questions about can you go to more than one tutorial for the same topic yes you can can you go to uh, different tutors yes you can one question I wasn't sure of the answer to is are there any audiobooks for B100 and I think Sarah you might be able to answer that question Audiobooks, I don't believe there are audiobooks for B100. If you have particular um, learning needs, though, if you get in touch with the student services team, um, then they can, they can put you in touch with our disability team. So um, if there are particular formats that people need um, materials in, then, then we can talk through how best we can provide that. But as far as I know, we haven't got audiobooks for B100. I know that there are apps that you can convert PDFs into audiobooks, and a lot of our students do that. They'll take a, a, a PDF, convert it to audio, and then on the bus or on the they're driving or on the train, whatever, they listen to that as well. So that's one option for, for students. But there have just been so many good questions coming up in here as well. Is there anything else at the moment, HJ, that you want to...? Uh, one of them was about TMA. So we want to know, are the dates of the TMA fixed? So do we have to submit them on that day, or can we do them earlier? What happens if life gets in the way? What's the best thing to do? Right. Well, you can definitely submit them earlier. That's never a problem. Um, do aim, if possible, to submit them by the deadline. If you find that you really are struggling, though, speak to your tutor. They may be able to give you an extension. The exception for that, there is the final TMA, um, for which an extension often is impossible. But again, keep in touch with your tutor, and they'll really be able to help you there. And if you submit it early, will you get it back early? No, if you submit it early, you'll still get it back on the same day. So tutors um, aim to mark within 10 working days, um, and it, it's uh, from the date that the assignment is due. So if you send it to the tutor early, unfortunately, you, you won't get it back early. The tutor will still mark within the same marking and then window. Say you, say you submit it early, and then you go on mm. holiday, and you think, oh, I haven't done quite the right thing there. <laughs> I've really messed up. Maybe you're on a Facebook group or something. Uh, uh, can you submit it again? As long as the tutor hasn't marked it, yeah. then yes, you can. What I would say is really keep in touch with your tutor and say, you know, I think I've missed something. I, I, I would like to submit again. As long yeah. as the tutor hasn't marked it and returned it, then the system will enable you to submit again um, up Just to... Just in the same way. Yeah, uh, in the same way up to the submission date. And I think... I think the limitation to that is for submissions, so I, I wouldn't keep number, submitting it I've again and again. <laughs> <laughs> but if you do think to yourself, my goodness, um, I, I have missed something out, contact your tutor straight away, say, hold, hold off on marking it, <laughs> I'll pop another one in. <laughs> so what happens then when you submit it and your tutor then um, spends time marking it and, and then you get your feedback back. What does that feedback look like? Mm. The, the, your tutor will provide you with a lot of feedback um, is the answer. So what I would say is don't, don't go to the mark and think, oh, that's all right, and ignore the rest of the feedback. The tutor will really provide you with um, advice on how you've met the learning outcomes uh, through the, their feedback. Um, will show you where you've included stuff that's really good so that you can go, oh, okay, I'll do that again, um, and areas where you can improve. Uh, for your next assignment so it's really about thinking to yourself okay um, how will I build on what I have already done it's a learning experience getting that feedback and so they will comment on things like um, understanding of the materials so if there's any misunderstanding of, of the module content they'll comment on that and hopefully help you to understand better um, they'll also comment on things like skills on how you have set out your assignment um, on how you have um, maybe applied what you've learned to a particular scenario um, and and so the feedback will be uh, you know quite well rounded it will re refer to learning outcomes skills um, content all sorts of different things so please don't ignore the feedback would be my advice to students no it's really important yeah. and very often you'll get the detailed feedback perhaps on the piece of work that you've done and then a summary outlining some of the key things so it's important to bear both in mind also yeah absolutely mm. so there'll be a summary mm. outlining the key points and often saying okay this is where you've done really well mm. and this is what we need to work on going forwards um, and then what I tend to do and what most 
tutors tend to do for students is to then put, put comments alongside the work as well to say this is exactly where yeah. you need to think yeah. about this piece of feedback yeah. um, and it makes it very obvious to students where they need Brilliant. to improve. And it's helpful to look at that afterwards and, and perhaps before you're doing something similar maybe your next assignment or a similar yeah. piece of work also. Now you can uh, find out how to contact your tutor so some of you may have your tutor allocated to you, some of you may still be in the process of receiving that information um, but you can find out how to contact your tutor from your student homepage and if you haven't heard from that in, them yet and you'd like to then why not drop them an email and introduce yourself but I'm sure you'll get connected very very soon. The last thing I just want to show people very quickly because unfortunately we're out of time um, is the qualification website so in addition to studying on your module it's important to recognize that you're part of something wider and those qualification websites let's just take a quick look at what one looks like um, are a great uh, space to find out additional resources for your study you can see news and up-and-coming events and keep in touch with things so uh, it's a really important thing to sort of keep in mind for in particular when you finished a module mm. well thank you so much for coming along today that's been absolutely brilliant it's a very thank very you. packed session um, and uh, I must end it there um, but do keep talking in the chat and HJ and Michelle will try and answer as many questions as possible. Our next session is going to be about business and law helpers here. Um, but first we're going to show you a quick video before that next live session. But do keep chatting uh, and we'll see you very soon.